today I am a mad scientist working in my science lab. But I think I can take a break from all of my science experiments to teach you another reading lesson today. Are y'all ready? All right, let's get started. So today is actually the last day that we are going to be working on the same reading skill that we've been working on for the past couple of weeks. All right, so can anybody remember what that reading skill is? Yes, that's right. We've been working on retelling a story to determine the central message or lesson. And if you remember on Monday, we journeyed through, ca through Candyland in order to make it to King Candy's castle and learn a very important lesson. So we should be experts by now, just like scientists are experts. We should be experts on our reading skills for this particular one. But today is the last day we're going to talk about it. And then we're going to move on. But today we're going to kind of dive a little bit deeper into retelling our story. Because we know when we retell a story, we have to think about the characters. And we also have to think about the events in the story, like the beginning, the middle, and the end. So today what we're going to do, we're going to think about our characters. And we're going to talk a, bit, a little bit more deeply about characters and some words that we could use to describe our characters. And we are also going to talk a little bit about cause and effect, okay? So the story that we are going to be reading today is called Ada Twist Scientist. This is one of Miss Nolan's favorite stories and I know that you're gonna love it. But we know, obviously, Ada Twist is going to be one of our characters, right? Yes, okay, and Ada Twist is also a what? A scientist, just like you. Did you know that you're a scientist? Yes, you are. You're a reader, you're a writer, you're a mathematician, you're a scientist, you're all the wonderful things. So thinking about a scientist, before we get started, I want you to be thinking about what makes a good scientist? What are some words we could use to describe a scientist. I've got a lot of words here, but I want you to tell me some. All right, give me one. Yes, okay. Do scientists have to try new things? They have to be very bold and very daring, right? Has anybody ever dared you to do something? If you're very daring, you're willing to try new things. So scientists are very daring and they're not afraid to give up and try new things. All right, what's another word we could use to describe a scientist? My scientist hair is pretty crazy today. Okay, um, scientists asks a, ask a lot of questions, right? And if you ask a lot of questions, that means that you're very curious. Yes, scientists are very curious about the world around them. So that's another word we could use to describe a good scientist. Okay, can you think of an, anything else? All right, what about creative? Scientists have to be creative in order to try new things. Like kind of like artists, like when you're painting a picture or drawing a picture, you have to be very creative. Get that creative brain going, okay? So daring, curious, creative. What about being a deep thinker? Is that important for a scientist? Yes, it is. Scientists are always thinking about their experiments and what happened and why it happened and always trying to figure out more. So scientists are deep thinkers, okay? And just like you, scientists have to be very smart, just like you are, yes. Scientists have to be very smart in order to experiment and learn all that they can. All right, I've got a few more here. Has your teacher ever told you that you were a good problem solver? So when we, typically when we think about being a problem solver, we think about math, right? But no, you can be, scientists are problem solvers. You are a problem solver. Sometimes scientists have problems with their experiments and they've got to figure out what to do to solve the problem. Okay, I got two more here. Imaginative. Scientists have to be very imaginative, have a really good imagination. Okay, oops, actually I have three more. You have to be able to count to be a scientist too. <laughs> All right, scientists have to be 
passionate. Do you know what it means to be passionate? If you're really passionate about something, just like Miss Nolan is super passionate about her job, I love being a teacher, scientists have to be very passionate about what they do. It's when you really love something, you're passionate about it. All right, and last one, scientists have to be questioners. I think I got a hair from my mouth. <laughs> scientists have to be questioners, always asking questions, which it, we're really going to notice this in our story today because Ada Twist asks a lot of questions, okay? All right, so remember how good readers have to be thinking before, during, and after they read a story. So we check, let's check that off our list. We were doing some thinking before we even started reading our story. We were thinking about some ways that we could describe a scientist, okay? So now as I'm reading, Miss Nolan's gonna ask you a couple of questions to get you thinking during our story and then after we read, we're going to talk a little bit about some cause and effect relationships. I'm sure your teachers have taught you a little bit about cause and effect before, but remember when we're retelling a story, we have to think about those events in the story. And sometimes we can do that with a little bit of cause and effect. All right, so the story we are going to be reading today is called Ada Twist Scientist by Andrea Beatty illustrated by David Roberts. I think you're really gonna like this one, but be thinking about if all of these words that we used, do these describe Ada? Let's find out. Ada Marie, Ada Marie said not a word till the day she turned three. She bounced in her crib and looked all around, observing the world, but not making a sound. She learned how to climb and made her big break with a trail of chaos left in her wake. She ran through the day chasing each sound and sight and didn't slow down till she conked out at night. So she's three years old and she hasn't even spoken a word yet. But it looks like she's good at making messes, doesn't it? <laughs> chaos. Her parents were frazzled but tried not to freak as Ada grew bigger and still did not speak. Clearly, young Ada, with lots in her head, would have something to say when it ought to be said. So her parents are like, why is she not speaking? They're kind of freaking out, aren't they? Yeah. That's just what happened when Ada turned three. She tore through the house on a fact-finding spree and climbed up the clock just as high as she could. Her parents yelled, stop, as all good parents would. Ada's chin quivered, but she did not cry. She took a deep breath and she simply asked, why? So she's, is she already, that, what was her first word? Why? That was a question. Do scientists ask, ask a lot of questions? Yes, they do. Why does it tick and why does it talk? Why don't we call it a granddaughter clock? Why are there pointy things stuck to a rose? Why are there hairs up inside of your nose? She started with why and then what, how, and when. By bedtime, she came back to why once again. She drifted to sleep as her dazed parents smiled at the curious thoughts of their curious child who wanted to know what the world was about. They kissed her and whispered, you'll figure it out. So I saw the word curious twice on that, okay? Wasn't curious a word we could use to describe a scientist? Yes, it was. Her parents kept up with their high-flying kid, whose questions and chaos both grew as she did. Why, what, how, when, why? What is it for? Will it be the same? Why want it? What does it say? Look at all those questions. She has a lot of questions. And in order to figure something out, we have to do what? Ask a question, yeah. Even Miss Greer found her hands were quite full when young Ada's chaos wreaked havoc at school. But this much was clear about Miss Ada Twist. 
she had all the traits of a great scientist. Look at them, they're doing science experiments. Fun, fun, fun. Ada was busy that first day of spring, testing the sounds that made mockingbirds sing, when a horrible stench whacked her right in the nose, a pungent aroma that curled up her toes. Zowie, said Ada, which got her to thinking, what is the source of that terrible stinking? How does a nose know when there's something to smell? And does it still stink if there's no nose to tell? She rattled off questions and tapped on her chin. She'd start at the start where she ought to begin. A mystery, a riddle, a puzzle, a quest. This was the moment that Ada loved best. Why do you think she loved this moment so much? Because what was she going to get to do? She was going to get to try to figure something out, just like scientists like to do. Ada did some research to learn all she could of smelling smells, both the stinky and good. One hypothesis Ada thought could be true. Okay, I'm gonna stop right there. A hypothesis is just like a guess. Have y'all ever heard that word, hypothesis? Say it with me, hypothesis? Yes, that's a guess. So one guess Ada thought could be true. The terrible stink came from dad's cabbage stew. She tested and tested, but soon Ada knew. It was time to come up with hypothesis two. Why do you think she had to come up with another guess? Yeah, maybe her, so clearly the smell wasn't, she tested dad's cabbage stew. She thought that that could be the problem, but it wasn't. So she's got to try again. Then zowie, the stink struck again, just like that. Hypothesis two, it's caused by the cat. The cat couldn't make such a stink on its own. It needed perfume and some fancy cologne. So young Ada tested. The test was a flop. She started again, but her parents yelled, Stop! What is Ada about to do with the cat? Put it in the washing machine. You can't do that. Ada Marie, Ada Marie, to the thinking chair now. By the time we count Three, enough, said her mother. That's it, said her dad. Her parents were frustrated, frazzled, and mad. Why, Ada questioned. Her mother said, no. What, Ada, Ada wondered. Her father said, go. You've ruined our supper. You've made the cat stink. Enough with your questions. Now sit there and think. She looked at her parents. Her heart turned to goo. Poor Ada Twist didn't know what to do. So her parents had had enough of all of Ada's experiments. She sat all alone by herself in the hall and Ada once more could say nothing at all. So she's in trouble. And so Ada sat and she sat and she sat. And she thought about science and stew and the cat and how her experiments made such a big mess. Does it have to be so? Is that part of success? Are messes a problem? And while she was thinking, what was the source of that terrible stinking? Ada Marie did what scientists do. She asked a small question and then she asked two. And each of those led her to three questions more and some of those questions resulted in four. As Ada got thinking, she really dug in. She scribbled her questions and tapped on her chin. She started at why and then what, how and when. At the end of the hall, she reached why once again. So as Ada's doing all of her thinking, what is she doing? She's writing all of her thinking out on the wall. Do you think her parents are gonna be very happy about that? Probably not. <gasps> look at all that. Her parents calmed down and they came back to talk. They looked at the hallway and just had to gawk like this. Uh, no patch of bare paint could be seen on the wall. The thinking chair now was the great thinking hall. They watched their young daughter and sighed as they did. What would they do with this curious kid? 
who wanted to know what the world was about. They smiled and whispered, we'll figure it out. So do they get mad? No, they're thinking, you know what? Maybe we should encourage our little scientist of a daughter. And that's what they did, because that's what you do when your kid has a passion and heart that is true. They remade their world. Now they're all in the act of helping young Ada sort fiction from fact. She asked lots of questions. How could she resist? It's all in the heart of a young scientist. So they decided to help her. But as for that smell, what can Ada Twist do but learn all she can with her friends in grade two? Will they discover the stink that curls toes? Well, that is the question. And someday, who knows? The end. All right, so do you think Ada Twist will ever figure out what is so stinky? I don't know. We're going to help her figure that out today because I've got a couple of mystery smells. But before we get to our experiment, okay, I want us to think about number one, what do you think the lesson is that we could learn from Ada Twist scientist? Remember, we've been talking about that, being able to figure out what the author is trying to teach us. So what do you think? Yeah, maybe the author is trying to teach us that it's okay to be passionate about something. Kids, you're supposed to be curious. You're supposed to be creative. Get out there and use your imagination. And you have to find the, the, what's really great about you. You have to find out what you're really good at and ask lots of questions and do whatever it takes in order to figure it out, just like Ada did. All right, so with that in mind, let's think a little bit about some cause and effect relationships really quickly. All right, so thinking about cause and effect, you have to think about the events that happen in the story. The cause is the why something happens. So let's say because there was a banana peel on the floor, what happened? Whoop, I slipped, right? Or because I was doing a science experiment, what happened? My hair, I got electrocuted, okay? So that's kind of cause is the why. And the effect is what happens. So I have some different causes in our story, and I want you to tell me what happened. So because Ada Twist did not speak as a baby, what happened? Yes, okay. So therefore, Ada Twist did not speak as a baby. Therefore, her parents were very worried, right? So this is the effect. This is the why. This is the effect. So why were her parents worried? Because Ada Twist did not speak as a baby, all right? Because she didn't speak as a baby, her parents were worried. Do you see how they go hand in hand with each other? Yeah, all right. So there we go. We have our first cause and effect. And I also have some little signal words here for you that you can use whenever you're thinking about cause and effect relationships. So let's look at our next one. Ada was a very curious kid, which caused, because she was a very curious kid, what was the effect of that? Yes. Ada was a very curious kid, which caused her to ask a lot of questions, right? She asked a lot of questions. She was a very curious kid. You can kind of go back and forth with cause and effect because it goes hand in hand with one another. All right, let's look at another one. Ada smelled a horrible smell, so what did she do? That's the effect. What did she do because she smelled a really horrible smell? Yes, she did some research and some science experiments. She did some research and some tests in order to figure out what this terrible smell was. So, there we go, we got another one. So since thinking about that, Ada smelled a horrible smell. She did some research and some tests. Now, I've got one more for you. Here's my why. Ada tried testing the cat. So what happened in our story when Ada tried testing the cat? What did her parents do? Yep, that's right. Her parents sent her to the thinking chair. They said, you go now. You are in trouble. No more of that. So why did her parents send her to the thinking chair? 
because Ada tried testing the cat. Yes, good job. All right, so those are just a couple examples of some cause and effect relationships. All right, and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that and we're gonna do a really quick little experiment to try to figure out what these horrible smells are. So if you remember on the very last page of our book, okay, Ada had a lot of things in some jars that she was smelling and she has her little nose smeller here and she's sticking it in there and trying to figure out what's causing all these stinky smells. So let's see really quickly if we can do this. So I've got a stinky smell here, all right? So we're gonna think about some cause and relationships. This is my mystery smell number one. Sniff, sniff. Woo! That is stinky. Let's see what we got in here. What do y'all think it is? Ew! Moldy cheese. Okay, so what do we have here? We have some moldy cheese. So think about why is this cheese moldy? This could be cause and effect relationship. Why do you think this cheese is moldy? What are some guesses? Would you have a hypothesis? Do you have a guess of why this cheese is moldy? Woo wee! Yucky, yucky. Okay, maybe the cheese wasn't in the fridge. Maybe it was left out for far too long. So because the cheese wasn't in the fridge, what happened? It got some mold. Let's do another one real quick. All right, another little smell. Mystery smell number two. Woo! Yucky, mucky, that one's sticky. All right, let's see what we got. Oh, I don't want to touch it. I don't want to touch it. What do y'all think? What do y'all think? Oh, my goodness. Ew! A rotten banana. Yuck. All right, so the what happened to this banana? It's rotten. That's right. Why do you think the banana is rotten? What are some guesses? Yes, okay, it's rotten because maybe the banana was in the garbage can. Maybe it was in the garbage can and someone took it out of the dumpster and that's why it's rotten. One more. All right, mystery smell number three. Let's go for it. Oh, oh I'm like, whoa, my goodness, this is making my hair stand up. All right, let's see what we got. Oh, it's a smelly sock. Ew, look at that. Pee -ew. All right, so the sock, what happened? The sock is really smelly, right? All right, the sock is smelly. So why do you think our sock is smelly? What could be a possible cause for our sock being smelly? Yes, good. Maybe the socks got wet. Maybe you were playing outside, you were playing a sport and your feet got soaking wet, so your sock got smelly, okay? All right, so there you have it, folks. All right, so what we did today, let's kind of just recap really quickly. We went over our characters, words that we could use to describe our characters. We talked a little bit more about a lesson that we can learn from our story. That was our big skill for the last couple of weeks. But we also took that and we really broke it down. And we also talked about some of the events in our story in the cause and effect relationships. And look, my mustache is falling off. <laughs> Earlier I was doing a science experiment and I burned my mustache a little. So. Anyways, so yes, we also did an science experiment to relate our cause and effect. All right, so Monday, we're gonna start a brand new skill and I wanna know who likes dinosaurs. Do you like dinosaurs? <laughs> All right, well, I will see y'all on Monday. Make sure you're reading over the weekend. All right, bye friends.